welcome to another fly tying tutorial today I will be tying Bob Weverka's mantis shrimp which is a bonefish fly the hook I'm using is a TMCO 811S size 6 if I'm not mistaken The thread I'm using is white because I don't have any more of any sand colored thread left. For the tail I'm using sand crab fur which I have adjusted to be about yeah, hook and a half lengthish from this really really big long hair. That's about a hook and a half. So we're gonna tie that in. And I'm gonna go just slightly down the hook bend. I'm gonna cut off the excess. tie it in and I'm gonna tie in some bead chain eyes not sure what size this is maybe medium because I got them from my sink I mean, depending on the depth you are going to fish this fly, you can use anything from tiny bead to big ass lead eyes. Now this fly is for a friend of mine and where he fishes bones, they are extremely, extremely spooky. Well, they get easily spooked anyway so you know he doesn't want to fly that makes a lot of plop when it hits the water I'm gonna turn the hook upside down and for the eyes I'm going just to use some shrimp eyes homemade eyes I'm gonna give them a slight bend Like that and I'm gonna tie them in pointing slightly upwards They are really slippery, I don't know why. Just make sure that they are even in length. Like that, I'm gonna cut off the excess mono, use the back of my scissors so the tip stays nice and sharp. Now I'm gonna just put a few thread wraps
around the eyes to make sure that they stay apart For the fillers, I will use some rainbow crystal flash. Looks kind of rainbowish anyway. One strand is enough. The length three or four times the hook shank but fold over Make sure they are nice and even. Uh, for the feelers or legs or whatever, I'm going to use crazy legs. These that uh, golden yellow pro flake thing is going to fall off first time the fly hits the water but that's okay you'll still have the nice black and olive legs left which is what is most important tie them slightly on the side about a hook length shorter than the antennae fold over I'm just gonna put them or try to put them under around the eyes so they stay out of the way. Mm -mm. Now for the top of the head or I don't know mouthpieces or whatever. I'm going to take some of those really short craft for fibers. Not too much, just a little bit. something like that and you want them just a bit past the eyes I tie in with two turns, adjust and I'm gonna take my needle and make sure I have about half and half on each side of the hook I'm gonna grab them the fur and work my way up
cut off the excess at an angle so you get a nice and even body for the body itself I am going to use there we go salt water dubbing blends this is SLF which is basically this only in a blended packet and I am going to use tan now this dubbing is not the easiest dubbing to dub so you have to take small amounts at a time and dub on the thread so the mantis shrimp is, is a great bonefish pattern but I would definitely try and use it for sea trout here in Norway I got some other tide for myself now you want to make sure it's dubbed properly on the thread because you are going to brush the fly afterwards and I don't want half I don't want half of the dubbing to end up on the brush. Now for the first set of legs. Again, same olive black. Gold flake crazy legs. The length right now not important. We are going to cut them to length when we're done. Tie them in on my side first and then on far side. just slightly point, pointing upwards some more dubbing Sometimes it helps to moisten your finger just a little bit. You can also, if you want to, spin the dubbing in, in a loop. I'll just take some extra time and do it by hand make sure you pull the legs forward And for the last set of legs,
and more dubbing. And I always make sure that I crisscross when I tie in dubbing that is not easily dubbable. Yeah, dubbable. We can we can make a new word. Easily dubbable on the thread. That will ensure just a bit more extra grip on the dubbing. It's okay to have a nice and bushy fly, but when you brush with this and half of the dubbing is lost, basically, that's no point. I mean, why throw away money? Speaking about SLF saltwater dubbing, in my opinion, the best dubbing ever for saltwater flies. I mean, the colors are amazing. The look of it in the water is, I mean, beyond anything. And there's just enough flash in it. Just enough, I mean, not too much, not too little, just enough to give it that nice uh, shelly look or fishy look or crabby or shrimpy or whatever. Just enough. It's worth every dime. Like that. I'm gonna take some super glue. <sighs> Sorry about the noise from the bobbin. And I'm gonna just wind the super glue thread. Oh man. Give it a quick whip finish. and snip the thread. Now for the length of the legs. Uh, let's say the length of the hook may be a bit longer. It's easier to have them longer and then cut them off if necessary or shorten them more if necessary. So there, something like that. If the legs are not perfect, as you can see, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's nature we're, we're talking about. Nature is not symmetric. It will maybe screw with your head if they are not perfect like these maybe. But then again, we, they're there for the movement and nothing more. So I'm going to take my brush and give it a few strokes 